Welcome to the history Welcome to the culture Welcome to the community that dreams and achieves Living in change For better tomorrow Welcome to the Eunice Mala Show Welcome to the Eunice Malat Show. I'm your host, Eunice Malat. We are so delighted to have you guys tuning in today. We have an exciting program lined up for you. We're going to go ahead and start the program with some music and dance.
parents, it's very important for us to give back to our respective community. It doesn't matter if you're from you know, Africa or if you're from Europe or Asia. It's always important once you've attained a level of success to go ahead and ensure that that success benefits your community. I had a chance to interview a good friend of mine by the name of Garang Gong, who started an organization called the South Sudan Emergency Aid. And in the program, he talks about how the organization is there to help the displaced people of South Sudan after the conflict that erupted a few months ago. So here's the interview with Garang Gong. have with us here a gentleman by the name of Garang Gang. He's the founder of an organization called South Sudan Emergency Aid. We thank you for being here with us. Thank you, Eunice Malas, and thank you for inviting me to your show, the Eunice Malas Show. You're uh, most welcome, you're most welcome. So tell us about the organization. Uh, South Sudan Emergency Aid uh, was founded in 2013, December 20, and that uh, that uh, uh, founding come as a result of what happened in South Sudan, as you may recall about the, the war that broke out uh, December 15, 2013. That war has affected a lot of children, a lot of women, elderly, and a lot of people uh, perish in that war. And so as a result, I came and sit with a few of my friends and I, we talk, uh, we brainstorm and say what can we do as a community to help those people who are most affected by the war. And so I came out with the name, the South Sudan Emergency Aid, and so that's how it was founded. Very good, very good. So what is the organization in terms of what is it trying to obtain and stuff from potential donors to help the people of South Sudan after the conflict that just took place? That is a very nice question, Eunice, and uh, it's a one of the things that, uh, that question actually is the, the first question that come out in our mind uh, when we were founding the organization. Uh, what can we do to help, uh, to help those people? And there are least of the things that we saw most important that they need to be, you know, they need to read those people. And that is the organization accept donation, uh, things like blanket, mosquito net, uh, clothes, uh, food, and an emergency medicine. And so emergency medicine go to the most uh, the wounded, the people who are wounded with the, with the, the very deep wounds of you know, the, the cancer and stuff like that. And so, uh, so we get those stuff and uh, we try to, we ship them. And there are organizations that are working with us. Those organizations are in the front line in the most hostile environment. Uh, where the South Sudan emergency aid cannot reach, we will be able to give it to them and they will take the books. So you're working with other organizations yes. in this initiative? Yeah. What are the organizations that you're affiliated with? I, we, we are affiliated with a lot of international uh, and uh, the most uh, important organizations that are actually in the front line now are the UNICEF, uh, the Red Cross, the International Red Cross, and the South Sudan Red Cross. And plus, there are other important uh, organizations uh, that are working to help uh, most in need. And so, uh, as I say, the places where we cannot reach, we try to coordinate with those organizations and help them as much as we can. Mm -hmm. Our main objective is to help those people, like the children that have been affected, mm -hmm. children that lost their parents um, they're during the war, that yeah. they have no place to sleep, they have no, they, they're living under the tree, mm -hmm. uh, they're living in swampy areas, yeah. and so they are more vulnerable to mosquitoes, and so they have, they have no, no food, they have no clothes, they have no blanket, they have no hoops mm -hmm. in their home, so those stuff like that. We try will also coordinate with the UN, uh, to try to read those people who are UN compound to, mm -hmm. to help those people too. Yeah, now with the conflict that took place and stuff, we know that it did not affect the whole 10 states within South Sudan. Yes. It affected how many states so far? That you About know three states so far. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the greater Afro Nile are the more that been affected. Yes. But at the same time, this war has a tenants mm -hmm. and they had an effect in, in, other, in, in other states. And so all those ravages, uh, mm -hmm. the internal displaced people, they are migrated to, other, migrate areas. to other areas yeah. and so affect those people. For example, there's a place called Gwalior. Uh, it is actually the place where I was born. And so Gwalior now has more than 10,000 
uh, more than 100,000 uh, coming from war, internal displaced people. And Gwalior is uh, it's a situated in lake, it's the gateway to lake, lake state. And so there is a lot of shortage. Uh, seeing we have more than 100,000 in that area, the place becomes so limited. Uh, there's a lot of disease outbreak over there. The cholera, I mean, the, the dysentery just break out over there, actually, hardly of this year. And so there's, there's a limited of food also to the local populations because there's not enough food in the market because of those people who come over there. There's limited of everything. There's no in our medicine, there's no in our blanket. There's, and that area scene is very close to the River Nile. There's a lot of mosquito, and therefore there's a lot of disease such as malaria and other stuff like that. And that's why our organization really need to pinpoint what can we do as an organization to help those people. Mm -hmm. And that is, we see that helping those people with mosquito net, helping them with medicine, the emergency medicine, uh, helping them with clothes and food and other stuff like that. Those are the most important thing that we could help. Mm -hmm. We also extend to try to counsel those people who've been affected, like the children, the women, the women who lost their husband in the war, the elderly who lost you know, their children in the war. We try to counsel them, we try to locate them, to try to locate the kids, try to locate the husband, mm -hmm. uh, to try to locate uh, uh, their lovely place where they could go to. So we try to work with the government, and the virus organization. Mm -hmm. So you're a very dynamic on our organization, not only dealing with medical aspects yeah. of uh, the situation there, yeah. but also the psychological uh, impact that this war is having on the population. Yes, yes. Now, this is really interesting because you're such a great person to be in this position because you have a history and you also have educational background in science. Yes. Could you please tell our audience what your background is education-wise? I got my degree in medical assistant and, and after that I went for four years and I got my degree in chemistry and biology. Now chemistry is a very difficult subject for those of us who have taken chemistry, you know? Yeah. So wow, that's commendable. And right now, I mean, uh, I was, my plan is actually to go to med school. So I started vigorously for uh, uh, the MCAT and uh, that uh, that went uh, very well. I applied to most of medical school. Now the, uh, the MCATs allow people once you pass the MCATs, now you can apply to medical school because without the MCATs you can't enter medical you school. You cannot. It's a gateway to medical school. It's a gateway basically uh, to yeah. medical school. And yeah. it's really very medical. It's like the SATs yes, and stuff, you yes, know, yes. to enter into college. Yes, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. And so I started for that, and I. I, you know, I apply and applying it costs a lot of money and other stuff like that. Being a refugee here, it's, it's a lot of uh, gut wrenching. And so I was accepted to a medical school of Antigua. Wow. Uh, and so, and unfortunately, something happened. Uh, my, there was the best of my second daughter, I, I am. And so, and I look at her, and then I look the place where I was going. I end up changing my mind, and so I did not go there. Also, financial issue become constraint to me. Mm -hmm. So I look into a different way. There's a different way to serve community, and so I was enrolled for my master's program uh, in Bellevue University. And right now, I'm almost done with my master's. Congratulations! And that is in the healthcare administration. Very good, very good. Yeah. So you're definitely in the right position to be able to help our people there because yeah. your intentions is to improve their life and improve the condition of the situation yes. because you understand the situation related to, okay, the environment impacting one's health. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. So yes, that's yes. very good. You are right, you mm -hmm. are right. And there's nothing have, uh, that can, uh, can make me happy as a person uh, to help other people. Uh, the reason why I come to this country because this country opened their heart to us as some Sudanese, especially the lost boys. Mm -hmm. And so when they opened that door for us, we should reciprocate that thing back to the community mm -hmm. to open our heart for those people who are in need. Mm -hmm. And that is exactly what is happening. What is happening in South Sudan now is something that had happened before. Mm -hmm. And we should work together as international community to help those people in need in South Sudan. What is happening over there can affect you here. Mm -hmm. And so I am asking uh, all uh, the international uh, community uh, to really help those people. Don't forget about the people of South Sudan. Yeah. Now. yeah, so if people want to help and stuff, where can they go? Do you have a website they can go to or do you have other outlets of ways they could get in contact with you? Yes, uh, the, there's a way, uh, if you try to help, uh, we, will, we, we accept donation. 
and uh, monetary donations. We accept monetary donation, uh, one dollar, two dollar. We whatever you have, we accept that. Uh, it's, it's take us very. I mean, things are very expensive for us to ship over here. We could buy stuff here and ship them over there, but it take a lot of resources to do that. Yes. So we encourage uh, people to to donate uh, money as much as possible. You know, five dollar whatever. Mm -hmm. And so there are places where you could uh, go to. You could go to Well Fargo Bank, uh, the South Sudan Emergency Aid account over there. Just go there and you ask for South Sudan Emergency Aid. And there's a bank over it's there. It's all it, uh, Yeah, and, and it's all over the country. Yeah, it's all over the U.S. Yeah, it's and all how over. about internationally? Internationally, uh, you could go to the website, uh, mm -hmm. South Sudan aid.hawk, songsudan.aid.hawk. Mm -hmm. You could also email me at songsudanaid at gmail.com uh, or grangong at gmail.com. Uh, it's also on Facebook, Song Sudan Emergency Aid on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And so there's always a connection. You, my telephone is over there, 402-707-7097. 402-707-7097. Oh, very nice, very nice. And we'll have the information for you here towards the end of the program and stuff. So, yeah, we really thank you for joining us here. And we really wish you the very best uh, as you try to help our people back home. Hi, my name is Lydia Jovicson and I currently finished my second bachelor's in speech and hearing sciences. My first was in finance. Um, I didn't have passion for that. I mean, money is good in that field, but I was really passionate about communication disorders. I felt I can give back to the community, uh, be it in, he in the U.S. or back home in South Sudan where we don't have that field. I will specifically be pursuing my doctorate in audiology, which is for hearing and balance impairment. Um, one thing that really irks me uh, and irked me from the beginning was the whole YOLO thing. Um, yeah, that's fine to sing in the song, whatever, but people actually live by that motto. Like, you have to wake up. You don't only live for today, because what you do today impacts how things end up for you tomorrow. So if you want to live life like you only have one life to live, it's one thing if you're using it in terms of pursuing your goals, and that's not keeping you back from fear. But in terms of partying it up, like there's no tomorrow, and just not being irresponsible, I think that's the wrong pursuit. That's the wrong way of um, carrying it. So youth, I think you need to have a focus in life. Um, your passion. If it's music, uh, yeah, there's a lot of people doing music, but you wanna balance it with something else also. So whatever you're passionate about, as long as it's bringing good to you, and also you can help other people with it, I think you should go with that. To end the program, we're going to go ahead and feature the ladies of Moortown. Now, I don't want you guys to go ahead and just sit down. Get up, dance, have some fun, shake your booty if you have to. It doesn't matter. You got to shake what your mother gave you, right? Okay, so here are the ladies of Moortown.
joining us here on the program we've come to the end of it but we hope that next week you'll join us same time same place here on the Eunice Mollard show thank you if you believe you can achieve Welcome to the culture, welcome to Camille.